Hello and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. Today in this IoT series of video, we are going to move ahead and learn about IoT protocol. So far, I have shown you uh, how to work with sensors and actuator using Raspberry Pis. I'm going to show you how to work with analog input using Arduino, right? But now it's time to uh, take a step forward and learn about protocols, right? And finally, we will see how we can use these protocols and our sensor and actuator and communicate over the internet or wide area network, right? So that's the, our end goal, um, how you can use IoT over the cloud, right? So today in this video, uh, we are going to discuss MQTT, uh, sometime called message queue telemetry pro protocol, but that's not official. So let's stick to MQTT, right? Before we dwell into I MQTT, uh, Let's try to ask why yet another protocol? Though we have so many protocols, right? Like we have HTTP, we have application layer protocols, transport layer protocols, then what is the need to write another protocol, right? So in IoT kind of an environment where you have your sensors and actuators or, or any device, right? IoT ecosystem device, they are constant devices. That means they do not have like enough uh, or so much resources. So you need a protocol which is lightweight and at the same time um, it it uh, actually it's, it's asynchronous so you don't have to set up the connection all the time and all those things right so we will you will see how MQTT come to rescue right and so let's look at the agenda real quick So within agenda what we have we have history we will know uh, how MQTT evolved then overview uh, MQTT architecture, uh, MQTT roles, and MQTT message types, quality of service, and finally we'll look at some real-world application and pros and cons, right? So history. I don't know about you guys, but I really like to know um, history of uh, anything what I'm learning because it's like a trivia for me. So just like a fun fact, MQTT was invented by Andy Stanford in uh, from IBM and Arlen Nipper in 1999 when their use case was to create a protocol for minimum battery loss and minimal bandwidth connecting oil pipelines oil so middleware uh, in the uh, in the oil uh, industry oil pipelines to the satellite connections right so it's an industrial IoT kind of use case then you I, I've been used this internally for quite some time and finally they decided to donate it uh, or release it as a royalty free version in 2010 and that's when it was introduced as version 3.1 now uh, the latest standard is version 5 and it is maintained by Oasis standards right it has a lot of new enhancements so I will uh, I'll, I'll totally recommend you to go and give it a read all right now let's uh, look at the overview of MQTT protocol. MQTT is an application layer protocol and it is a lightweight and easy to implement. It runs over well-known TCP IP stack. So we already know our TCP IP and MQTT is a lightweight application layer protocol. The data link can be any anything. That means you can use a, a wireless, low power wireless or Bluetooth, uh, low energy. Uh, but uh, given that you will get different distance, um, right? but you can you are free to use based on what is your ecosystem looks like mqtt uses tcp port and there are two port types reserved for unsecured connection it uses 1883 and for secured communication obviously the security is inbuilt as you can see it uses 8883 and what 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 i mean when i say listen to this port that means broker your MQTT broker will be listening to this port when you enable the services. And we will learn about the broker in follow, following slides, right? So first, what you have to do, you have to set up a TCP connection. Obviously, since it's an application layer protocol, you need to know the broker IP address. And first you connect uh, uh, to broker and set, a, uh, set up a connection using TCP. And after that, MQTT protocol uh, comes into picture and it uh, connect uh, based on application layer messages. Okay, this is how MQTT stack looks like, IPTCP, and on top of that, MQTT at application layer. Okay, MQTT pub sub architecture or publisher subscriber architecture. It This is uh, actually revolutionary um, and we'll see why they decided to do, do that. But in most of the internet uh, uh, arena, you'll see most of the protocols are 
server client kind of protocol so client is a one who's requesting resources and server who's serving the resources but mqtt is based on publisher or subscriber architecture that make it a asynchronous protocol and that means sender and receiver doesn't have to be online at the same time because we have a intermediate intermediary setting in between and that is we call mqtt broker mqtt provide time and space decoupling for sender and receiver of the message because uh, uh, it, it provides time decoupling that means sender and receiver doesn't have to be uh, online at the same time and space decoupling they do, do not have to be sitting in the same environment it can be over the internet or via cloud and all those things so there are three roles publisher subscriber and broker right publisher publishes to a topic and we will see what is a topic in following slide subscriber obviously subscribe to a topic because it needs that information broker uh, on the other hand listen to all topic published and relay the interested topic to subscriber which it asked for so broker listen to all the topic and then it can run filtering and then relay the uh, interested topic to subscriber broker can store published data if sub subscriber is not line so there are policies and flags which you can use uh, to make sure that uh, your data uh, broker stores that data while subscribers are not online right and also in version 5 we have qs quality of service for messaging this is a typical mqtt subscriber uh, scenario so you have a mqtt client and one end and uh, it is talking to mqtt broker subscribe then it get a sub subscribe acknowledgement and then finally mqtt broker can publish the message to the subscriber right Publisher, obviously, pretty simple. Uh, a client can be publisher and subscriber at the same time, or uh, you have you can be either client or uh, pub uh, subscriber or publisher. So there is no restriction with that, right? So MQTT client connect uh, with MQTT broker and publishes the topic, and in turn, broker publishes this topic to all other MQTT client if they subscribe for this topic, right? MQTT broker. This is very important, as you can see, any client. First, they have to co connect with MQTT broker at application layer and the first message, uh, what is used to take, make this handshake happen is a connect message. And connect message is very rich message. It has username, password, and a lot of other flags. So basically, uh, it's not possible for me to show you all the flags, flags and all the messages. So uh, that's why I, I highly advocate you to go and read the white paper. But at the very end, we will actually glance through the uh, white paper and I'll show you some of the flags. But uh, connect is the first message. When I, whenever any client, whether publisher or subscriber uh, comes up, it first try connect to MQTT broker because we already know the IP address of uh, broker. So we make TCP connection and then finally, and then we start MQTT uh, connect at application layer. So once you set in the connect, it has a lot of flags. Uh, which you can use to uh, like last will, last will teasement, and uh, a username, password, clean, clean session, so that yeah, you can make the connection persistence. And then once MQTT receive that connect, it will acknowledge with a con contact. And then you can start doing publishing and subscribing and disconnect, finally disconnect, right? All these things we will see in the demo, live demo. Okay, so we we said that publisher subscribe to a uh, publishes to a topic, subscriber subscribe to a topic. So what is a topic? Topic is a UTF and string separated by um, backslash. Topic can be nested and wildcard can be used. So when a subscriber want to subscribe something, it can uh, it doesn't have to like list all the topics. You can use wildcard like kind of scenario. The slash itself is a topic. So you can say as a root of the topic wildcard is used only at subscriber right because that's where you want to do filtering topic with special signs in the beginning means they are unsubscribable and they are like a, a use as administrative um, purposes okay broker keep count of publisher and subscriber by a special topic and mind it topic is case sensitive so if you are publishing uh, in this format like lowercase sdn you have to subscribe in the same format lowercase sdn Okay, message type, as I mentioned, so the very first message is a connect, then based on your role, you can either pu uh, publish, subscribe, and finally you can say unsubscribe or disconnect. So these are like free, uh, uh, few 
predominated messages within the MQTT protocol, but there are many. And within each message, they are so flag rich. So they have so many flags and flags are taking care of like all corner cases and well thought scenarios. So uh, there are so much going inside these messages. Now let's finally talk about quality of service. In version five, we have quality of service support available and there are three levels of quality of service. QS0, QS1, QS2, and QS0 is at most once. So you can see, uh, you can say that this is the best effort delivery, right? So maximum, you can have one. At least once uh, is like one or more in exactly once. So it will deliver these messages exactly one by some handshake so that you know that, okay, message is delivered and now uh, it can take action on, on top of that. MQTT install, if you want to play around with this protocol to getting started is very, very, very simple. You on your client, uh, on your server or broker, what you can use, you can use a uh, mosquito as a uh, mosquito is a MQTT protocol and you can say apt get install mosquito uh, that will start a broker service on your uh, server, right? For client, you can do a pip install. There are various ways you can install or there you don't have to use Mosquito, you can use something else. And I'll show you the Hive MQTT where you can use a web-based broker uh, to connect to. But within your environment, if you want to really start uh, very easily, you can use server as Mosquito and you can install client via pip services, pip3 install, Paho MQTT. So Paho MQTT is a MQTT client which can act as a uh, subscriber and publisher, okay. MQTT pros and cons. Pros obviously uh, tailored for resource constrained devices as we uh, discussed. And TCP base means reliable transmission at layer four. And uh, so since MQTT runs on TCP, it's already reliable at lower level. But if you want to have uh, reliability within your protocol, then you can go to QS services. Um, so you can ensure that this is delivered at least once or at most once or exactly once and that's how you can introduce reliability right subscriptions allow distribution to many yes many people can subscribe to the same topic and q is available to ensure distribution and avoid duplicates right cons tcp connection to broker means that always on connection right so you are you are setting a tcp connection at least to your broker if not to all the subscriber at least to, for broker, you need to make that connection. And then since this is TCP based, that means it's always on connection. MQTTS is another variant which uh, addresses this problem because that runs on uh, UDP, right? Okay, now before we go to actual demo, let me introduce you a couple of websites uh, which comes really handy. Uh, so first, this is the MQTT version five. You can see docs.oasis. This is open.org and here you can read through your MQTT version 5 in various format, HTML, PDF and all. So I'll highly recommend you to uh, download this and maybe you can do highlighting uh, wherever you feel important, right? Uh, maybe a PDF version or doc version. And as you can see, message queuing telemetry transport. This is um, the acronyms, okay? so. A lot of details here, QoS related details, auth payload, various subscribe, unsubscribe, connect, publish, publish release, and all those so many well thought of like uh, flag are here, okay? Another website what I want to show you is a Hive MQTT. Hive.com uh, is, HiveMQ.com is a uh, website which is very active in MQTT and it can give you a online broker. So if you have a, Raspberry Pi or something which you want to connect to a broker, you can totally use MQTT broker, which is uh, available here, okay? And there are a lot of nice blogs. I uh, totally advise you, uh, if, if you have time, you can go and read them, okay? Now let's go to our demo. So for this demo, to keep things short, I'm not going to actually log into client and broker. I have captured, I have, uh, captured the Wireshark session and that's where we are going to just look at the MQTT protocol. As you can see, uh, my source is 192.168.134 and destination is some public IP address 5196. So 134 is actually a um, broker sitting on-prem and then we have someone who's coming 
from internet and obviously since my broker is sitting in uh, behind the net i need to do some port forwarding uh, just fyi uh, so you can see first is connect command so uh, 5.196 is trying to connect to a broker on application layer because it's already made, made a connection on tcp layer you can see tcp source port 42891 and destination port is 1883 that is my well known uh, mqtt broker port right so tcp connection is already set and now the first command at application layer is connect command and a lot of other flags you can see protocol length, length message length version is 3.1 so i'm not running uh, uh, version 5 this is version 3 right and there are flags as i mentioned qs level is uh, zero at most once and clean session flag is also not set okay keep alive so you can do some ping like mechanism that to check if the broker is online once my broker receives the connect command it's sent connect acknowledgement as you can see connect acknowledgement is sent okay connection accepted once connection is accepted now why uh, 5.196 or client uh, so subscriber wanted to connect to the broker because it wanted to subscribe to something right and that's what you can see here uh, it is subscribe request id 1 id 2 and th these are the topic you can see core electronics backslash, backslash test and backslash topic so it want to subscribe to these two topics and they both subscribe subscribe request has their own id let's look at uh, this thing message type is subscribe request topic length topic type and topic qs okay then based on that uh, subscribe request my broker decided to grant uh, or acknowledge subscribe request as you can see message is subscribe acknowledgement message identifier one and granted qs so the qs negotiation happened but uh, subscriber wanted zero broker granted zero but it may be sometime that subscriber want two and broker can give you two or it can decide to not give you two or one so it's a negotiate uh, negotiating environment okay fine so far so looks so good so we have connect application layer uh, handshake happen then intent to subscribe subscribe intent acknowledge and then it obviously publish the data as you can see since you already subscribed to test so broker knows that okay this is the topic uh, one of the subscriber it is interested in and it publishes that topic okay so message as you can see the message is very minimal it's a uh, so lightweight right for and great for constraint devices and same thing keeps on going on finally what we can see we can have a disconnect request so client is subscriber is going down and send me a disconnect request so that my broker is aware that okay subscriber is not online again but you can uh, force your subscribe uh, broker to maintain the state by setting up some flags but we are really trying to just scratch the surface of this protocol and uh, i can uh, come up with more follow-up videos if i see enough interest so uh, please uh, give the white paper a read ask me the questions and if you have uh, if i see uh, enough interest i'll probably make some more detailed video on mqtt protocols right and as you can see the cool stuff here go ahead blame the network uh, so i'm coming up with some merchandise as well if you like uh, let me know your feedbacks okay thank you